In this video, I'm going to go over a somewhat simplified version of the assignment. I'm just going to do one normal stamp in Maya and one in Illustrator and go through the rendering and painter parts of the assignment. So it's very important to remember that when you are modeling for high poly, that you do not leave it as 90 degrees. Um, you're not going to see the back or the sides are also not seen. And right now this would not work because if we put a flat plane here and bring it up, you can't see where one starts and the other ends. So it's important that we have some good beveling and change of directions. It doesn't really matter what you make as long as it's a overall just a good design. I'm just going to model something kind of quick. And let's see, I'm going to bevel all the edges. I think I got all of them. And when you're doing this, um, N-Gons are not as important as they usually are uh, in the sense that they won't break the render. Where they can be an issue is sometimes they don't smooth incredibly well. So if you're going to hit three or go to mesh smooth, there might be some issues, but not always. And again, it just depends on um, what type of N-Gon, how it is, where it is on the geometry. So things like this, I'm not very worried about because uh, I'm just going to leave it exactly as it is and be done. The depth of it doesn't really matter at all uh, because you don't see depth. You don't see the back of it. So it could look like this or it could like that. It'll be the exact same render when it's done. But you do need to rotate it so it is facing the front camera. So I have the view cube up here, it says front, and it's facing that direction. And I'm just going to open up the front Z camera. And then open up the Arnold render view under Arnold and open Arnold render view. If I render right now, nothing will happen. Because uh, there are no lights in the scene. I'm going to go to this render tab here in the render view. Go down to debug and normal. So now I'm rendering out a normal stamp. You can see it's being cut off, but we need to render this out as a square. So we don't want to have any of it cut off, but every texture brought into Painter is a square, so we need to render out as a square as well. You can go to Windows, Rendering Editors, and Render Settings right here. It's also this button right here, the gearbox. When it opens, go down to Image Size. And oops, there are some presets. And any of these squares are good. I'm just going to do a 2K square for now. And when I zoom out, you can see that I have a lot of empty negative space. So I'm going to zoom in in the 3D viewport, not in the render view. Until it more or less fills up the frame. If you have an RTX, graphics card, you can go to system and change it from CPU to GPU, and it will render much faster. Generally when you do that, it's a good idea to go to the second tab, Arnold Renderer, and just turn the quality up to about um, 5 or 10. It will take longer, but it will render out a bit cleaner. And then when you're done, go to File and save multi-layer EXR. I'm just going to put this on the desktop for now, and this will be stamp one. And I am done with that render. I'm going to hit the red square stop button so it does not update the render every time I move the camera. So the next thing I have to do is in Illustrator. I'm just going to open up Illustrator. And I already have a design that I'm going to use. It is this. And I'm just going to drag it into Illustrator. 
And the controls for Illustrator are somewhat similar to Photoshop. Z is zoom, H is your hand tool to move around. We're not doing a whole lot in Illustrator. Um, v is move, and you can see if I move it off of the white background, it has its own white background. And if your canvas is not the same size as mine, it does not matter. As long as you can see your design in here, you're good. I don't want this white background. Uh, that will break what we are trying to do. And luckily, there is, in the process that we are doing, an option to remove it. So I have a black and white design. And my mode is set to black and white by default. Open up the advanced tab and come down to ignore color. Even though there is a eyedropper to select color, that eyedropper can only select white. So just turn it on and it'll be good. If you don't have a black and white design, either go into Photoshop and change it so the design you want to keep is black and the background is white, or just find a different design. And what we're going to do is an image trace, which converts to a vector. So right now it's a raster image, so we can see all those pixels. And if I hit trace on the bottom, we now have a nice vector image. However, I do need to turn on ignore color. There we go. So now we have a nice vector image of just that uh, design. You can scale it down if you need to. And again, it does not matter if it goes off of this canvas or anywhere, as long as you have it. I'm going to hit the expand button on the top. If you don't see expand, go to window, workspace, and essentials, essentials classic. Uh, that's the one that I'm usually in when I'm in Illustrator. Also, if you don't have the image trace option, it is under window and image trace. Next, I want to convert this to a 3D object, which you can again find under window, 3D, and materials. I have it over here. There we go. And I want to, actually before I do that, I'm going to change the color so it's not black. So I'm going to double click on this color swatch over here on the left. And it's going to find a neutral gray, hopefully. Oh, I didn't actually hit expand. Hit expand, then you can change the color. There you go. And it's a little bit easier to see the 3D version when it is gray instead of black. You're going to hit extrude. And now I have a 3D version of that design. This would not work as it is right now because the angles are exactly 90 degrees. And that doesn't work well for baking. There might be a little bit of detail, but not a whole lot. We're going to come down into the same 3D material menus to bevel and turn on that bevel. So if I zoom in, you can see it's starting to get a little bit of a nice rounded edge. You can change the bevel type. Uh, you can change how many times that bevel repeats. And a lot of other options. I'm just going to do something just simple like that. And once I have this design, go to Window and Asset Export, which is over here. And make sure you have it selected. So hit V or the top left tool to have your selection tool. Click on it and click on this little plus sign under Export Settings. You can rename it if you want. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as Asset 1. OBJ is what you want to export it as. And then select it, so make sure this little box up here of Asset 1 is selected, and then you can export in the bottom right. And let me just delete that folder. Going to... There we go. And when you do that, it makes a folder called OBJ on the desktop. It will give you an MTL and an OBJ file. You can delete the .MTL. We don't need that. And the next step is done in Maya. So I'm going to drag that OBJ in. It might take a moment depending on your design. You also might have um, several different um, objects in it depending on if your design is connected or not. So this part is the only part of the design that was not connected to everything else. That's okay. It does not matter how many pieces your object is. You can put it in a group or you can do a mesh combine. It does not matter at all. It's already, for me, facing the front. It should always export facing the front, but if it's not, rotate it so it's facing the front. 
and then navigate to the correct camera and render your design. And then zoom in so it fills up the screen. And for more intricate designs like this, I'd probably recommend doing a 2 or a 4K render. Like, it still has a lot of nice detail, but um, the bigger it is, the better it will look. And this will be Illustrator Stamp 1, saved as an EXR. All right. So now that I have two stamps done, one in each, I'm going to import them into Illustrator, not Illustrator, into Painter. I'm just going to drag and drop them into my assets, the EXR files. I'm going to mark them as both textures. And I want it as current session because I don't need these in Painter forever. And then I'll hit import. I also need something to paint on in Painter. So I'm just going to export a flat plane. I'm going to make a new object, load the just the plane into the new project window, hit OK. If you don't see anything, rotate your camera. And I'm going to make a new layer. And I'll call this normal one. and scroll down in your properties and I only want to use the normal channel so I have color metal roughness normal and height those are all the default uh, PBR channels or uh, that you have I just want normal so I'm going to alt left click on NRM to only keep that one turned on or you can click on them one at a time to turn them off and then I'll start with the Maya stamp I'll just drag it to normal I'm going to make my brush bigger, which you can do by control, right click, and drag left and right. You also have your size option up here. If you don't see a preview of your normal stamp, come up to the top left of Painter and make sure it is set to full preview cursor. By default, it will not give you a preview of normal stamps, which is kind of annoying. So turn it on so you can see what and where you are painting. And there's a few issues with the brush. It has an alpha on it, and that alpha is just a black and white circle with a fall off, and it's making it so it's going to fade away, which I don't want. So I'm just going to scroll up from the material channels to where it says alpha and turn it off. Just hit the X. So now I do not have that issue, and I can just place it right there, and it looks just fine. And then I'm going to make a second layer, normal two. Scroll on down and drag the other design. And there we go. The next thing I want to do is add um, some metal edgeware or some dirt. So I'm going to make a just a metal layer. So search for metal. Use this metal polished. Keep it as brass for now. Generally, what we do is we would make a black mask, create a generator, and if we're doing dirt, we'd use dirt. We also have metal edgeware. I'm going to turn on metal edgeware, and as you can see, it is not doing anything with our normal stamps. And there's a few reasons why the generator is not working right now. The first one is we didn't do a bake. So generally when we have objects, we have to bake so Painter can see where all the edges are and how thick objects are and all of that, which is done by hitting F8 or the little croissant. Use low poly as high poly, generally, and you bake out all of your maps. We don't really have much of a model, we just have a flat plane, and the normal stamps are not included in the bake because they are not geometry that are being brought into Painter. So Painter can't see the normal stamps right now. So if I turn that on, it's still just going to do nothing that I want it to do. There is a nice feature in Painter called Anchor Points. There we go. And what an anchor point is, is just a reference 
So a different layer can look at a specific channel. So I want this metal edge layer to look at the normal channel of my normal stamps. And they're very easy to set up, even though it is kind of confusing at first. I have the layer selected. And I'm going to go to the magic wand and go down to add anchor point. You can also right click and at the very bottom it has add anchor point. And that's all you have to do right here. Your anchor point will have the same name as your layer. So normal one, the anchor point is called normal one. On the metal edge layer, I'm going to come up to it and I'm going to scroll all the way down to where it says micro normal. I'm going to click on that and I have a tab up here called anchor points with normal one. It's the only anchor point I have. I'm going to click on it and we have a few things to set up. The reference channel by default is the base color. However, we don't have any base color here. We only have normal information. So I need to change that from base color to normal. And then scrolling up a little bit more, there is a drop down menu called micro details. If I open that up, I need to turn micro normal to true. So now it is looking for the normal information from that anchor point which is referencing the layer. And then from the micro details, I can change some different options, have a little bit more or less metal edge wear. And it's a nice way of adding a little bit of extra detail to your texturing when normal stamps are by default ignored by um, generators. I'll just change that, leave that to bronze. Now the downside is, let's say you have multiple normal stamps on different layers, like I have right now, only one generator, um, only one anchor point per generator. So I can't add a second anchor point to the same generator. You can add multiple generators to a mask, but generally if you want to have um, multiple normal stamps, so let me just add another one. In Painter they're called hard surface stamps, so I'm just going to take this one. If I add to it, add to that same layer, it will have that same metal edge wear on it. So I can just use that same anchor point, draw more normal stamps, and will continue to reference those channels. I'm going to do pretty much the exact same process with this normal stamp. I'm just going to put a dirt layer on it. I'm just going to do a very simple dirt, make it just brown. And bring that roughness down like that. Going to add an anchor point called normal two. This fill layer, going to add a generator and a dirt layer. Oops, need to add a mask first. Black mask, and then you add that generator. And it's the exact same process. Micro normal, anchor points, I want normal two. Change base color to normal, then scroll up to micro details and set micro normal to true. Now sometimes the generators will go kind of everywhere, um, even when you don't want them elsewhere. You can change the dirt level on the main one and then try to balance it with the others, or you can use some masks to um, uh, mask out the dirt that you don't want, but you generally don't have just a flat plane. So it usually works a little bit better than this. So if you have a little bit of extra dirt scattered around, don't worry. Uh, the main thing is getting it to work on the actual normal stamps themselves. For the assignment, you will have two uh, separate planes, one with just your normal stamps from Maya, one with just your normal normal stamps from Illustrator, and you'll just go through this process for all of them. You can have all of them on the same level or same layer with the same anchor point, or you can use different anchor points for each stamp to have different um, generators. Not every generator has the option for um, anchor points. The metal edge wear and the dirt do, a couple others do as well.